All right, good evening. Good to see all of you here tonight. See some of you are sitting at uh, conflicting tables, but you can just move your decorations around like I did. You'll be fine. Uh, I'm saying there is a habitation. There is a habitation built by the living God for all of every nation who see that breath of hope. Shades of night till Jesus came to me, and with the sunlight on his love in all my darkness be. Sunlight, sunlight in my soul today. Sunlight, sunlight all along the way. Since the Savior found me, took away my sin, I have the sunlight of his love with the clouds may gather in the night, the pillars round me roll, and there the dark the world may be of sunlight in my soul. Sunlight, sunlight in my soul today. Sunlight, sunlight all along the way. Since the Savior found me, took away my sin, I have had the sunlight of his love with I cross the wide extended fields, the journey o'er the plain, and in the sunlight of His love I read the golden grain. Sunlight, sunlight, in my soul today. Sunlight, sunlight, all along the way. Since the Savior found me, took away my sin. I have had the sunlight of his love within. Soon I shall see him. Soon I shall see him as he is the light which came to me. Behold the brightness of his face throughout eternity. Sunlight, sunlight in my soul today. Sunlight, sunlight all along the way. Since the Savior found me, took away my sin, I have had the sunlight of this love with him. Now we'll have a prayer. Let's pray together. Father, we worship you, we praise you, we call you our master, we call you the creator, 
who call on your name. We're thankful for God, for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're thankful for everything that you've done for us, the things that we know about, the things that we don't know about. Father, uh, there are times when the world judges you by our behavior and the things that we do. And we know that we fall short, and we know that if the world will just get to know you directly, they'd see how great you are, how wonderful and beautiful you are. But we pray that we do a better job every day of being the people that you want us to be and the people that would make other people want to be like us and to be like you. We're thankful for the chance to gather together. We're thankful for this building and all the direction that we um, provide to make us into the future. We're thankful for the, all the families here, the young people. Pray that you bless them. As we worship you in this um, service, we pray that it uh, glorifies you and that it builds us up. We're thankful for your son. In his name we pray. Amen. All of God's singers get home. What a song of delight in a city so bright, where the glad beneath heaven's red hole. How the ransom will raise happy songs in his praise when all the God singers get home. When all of God singers get home, where never a sorrow will come. As we sing here on earth, songs of sadness or mirth, to support take the rapture to come. But our joy can compare with glory up there when all of God's singers get home. When all of God's singers get home, whenever a sorrow will come. There'll be no place like home when all of God's secrets get home. Having overcome sin, hallelujah, amen, we'll be heard in that land of the poor. Every heart will be light and his face will be bright when all of God's secrets get home. When all of God's singers get home, where never a sorrow will come, there'll be no place like home, when all of God's singers get home. Sermon title is Biography. Would we have believed them? The scripture reading comes from Matthew chapter 13, verses 54 through 58. When he had come to his own country, he taught them in the synagogue, so they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? And the sisters, are they not with us? Where then did this man get all these things? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and his own house. Now he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Good evening, church, and welcome to Kid Team. Good evening. I want to remind you again about our renewal program that we have every year, and we have two wonderful speakers that are coming this year. Uh, Kevin Haynes from Wind Passes, Texas, and then also from Texas, we have Chris Winford coming, and it's going to be, you're, I'm, you're going to love both of these men. Brother Kevin is one of the gentlest, sweetest, you just, I've never known anybody who could even have a negative thought towards him. He's got that tender, 
kind personality. You're going to love him so much. He lost his wife last year. He's recently been remarried, and so they're newlyweds, and he's bringing his sweet wife with him. And it's just going to be a joy to have them here. Chris Swinford has traveled the world. Uh, he was over the international schools for Sunset for many years. He's been in pretty much every country and every continent, and he's got some incredible stories, including I hope he tells about preaching at the Voodoo Pit in Haiti while people were bathing in blood and witchcraft and everything around. It's just some fascinating, fascinating life experiences. So hopefully Chris will share some of that as well. So it's the 7th. We'll start riding here that night on Saturday night, 7th of October, with our dinner. And then we'll have a dinner speaker of Kevin Haynes. You'll hear both of them on Sunday, then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You'll be able to choose. And uh, we're going to have child care those nights. So we want you not to have any reason not to come and be uplifted and encouraged by Renewal 2023. Then on Saturday morning, and we'll give you more information about this as it comes, but on the 14th of October, we have our financial seminar just for three hours in the morning over here in the face. So put that on your calendar as well. <coughs> I hope you have enjoyed our study of different biographical pictures in scripture. We talked about people like Micaiah, a, a somewhat unknown Old Testament prophet. We talked about Josiah. Uh, we looked at a number of different characters and their unique stories. And there's several reasons for this. Each of them, although they're less known, they are included in the biblical record to be studied and examined until the end of time and the return of Jesus on this earth. So the Lord honored each of these individuals that we should learn from them and we should grow. Therefore, they deserve our time and attention. But one of the things I wanted, and I hope that you have gleaned from it, is to see the glorious uniqueness of every single believer, of every person who's a follower of Christ. You know, we tend to kind of default to our tribalism. And that's evident tonight when I saw Duke moving the, the blue and red, you know, little pom-poms from one table to the other, and then others are marine and maroon and white. And we're, we're kind of glorifying our tribalism tonight, right? And this is a fun tribalism. It doesn't matter. But human beings, if you don't know this, Sociologists will tell you human beings are deeply tribal in the way that we think. And in some ways, we try to overcome that in the church. And in some ways, we must overcome it in the church to not practice partiality. But there are some aspects of it that are just kind of part of human nature. People like to be around other people that they have some commonality with. I mean, don't they? I mean, we do. I mean, if you have the same interest, it's going to be easier to build a friendship with that person than if you don't. It's just true. And people in our society, they draw closer to others who have the same religion or have the same values or have the same political beliefs or, that, or they're of the same race or the same background, whatever it may be. People are tribal. That's how they are. And one of the real dangers of it that we constantly have to keep in check is to not open ourselves up to see the beauty and pursue relationships with people who are different than we are. I'll tell you, some of the most rewarding relationships in my life has been with people that were very different than I was. In fact, Miss Lenora grew up in an extremely different environment than I grew up in. She grew up learning how to drive in the San Francisco Bay Area. Me, I grew up learning how to drive with my dad's Caprice Classic on, in a little bitty town, you know. She grew up in a world where, you know, Aunt, Aunt Carol came to Christ when she got to know us and Lenore and I were married, but they, they weren't Christians at that time. Lenore came from a very different family environment. And in fact, when I first started dating Lenora, my mom and dad, we had a pretty serious conversation because my mom and dad were concerned. And basically, they didn't know her very well. They were just going on her background, right? Different. And I would treat that decision. That's the best decision I've ever made my whole life, right? But totally different. 
but a decision a lot of people wouldn't consider because of that tribalism. Some of my dearest friends, I have a friend named John Wigan, he's an attorney for the Federal Trade Commission, works in San Francisco. This has been his entire life. He grew up in New Jersey, right across the river. His dad worked in New York City. It's New York City the other day. He went to college in Chicago, Illinois, and he's lived his whole career in San Francisco. And when he comes to the Tom family in Camden every year, he complains the whole time and says, I wish they'd just paid this place. He'd rather cut every tree in the world down and make buildings. And I mean, I just don't, I can't relate to that. I live on the Natchez trades. I can't relate to that. But I'll tell you, that has been, we've been friends for 25 years. And this is one of the most spiritual godly men. Never been married. We don't have that in common. He doesn't have any children. Don't have that in common. And we need to like the outdoors. Don't have that in common. You know what we have in common? We have the Lord. And that has been such a, and you know, John, he's, he's just a little different. I mean, he's, he has people who just have lived their whole life in a city with me. He's just different. But what a rewarding relationship. My son said, uh, when I was out there doing a seminar a few weeks ago, we were talking about his work and he's got three elders. And the three elders, he was talking about how good, and he loves all three of them, they're great guys, but one of them he's grown really, really close to. And he said, you know, he said, Dad, it's so strange because when I first moved here, I thought, well, I don't know. I probably won't be very close to him. He says, because he doesn't comb his hair. The elder doesn't comb his hair. He just, his hair just like, whoa, you know? Every day he looks like a mad scientist all the time. And he's just, a, he's rather eccentric, a little bit odd. But Seth was telling me, he said, Dad, I thank God for him every day. We become so close. We go to lunch every week. And he said, he's just the best man. Because, but he's different. I want to tell you, I'm going to tell someone, somebody here, but when we first moved here, I remember I was talking to little Seth, and he was at home, you know, during college, COVID hit and all that, and so he was living here with us, and, and I said something about, yeah, that some, some Dr. Cole, and he said, who's Dr. Cole? And I said, Seth, we went to lunch with him yesterday. He said, that guy's a doctor? <laughs> he said, I'm familiar. He said, I thought he was a farmer. <laughs> All he wears is camel. <laughs> I mean, but Kevin, yeah, that's not an insult, man. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. What I'm my point by all of this is that we have to be cautious because if we're not, we don't see the uniqueness, the beauty in other people, right? Even if they're no different than we are. And to illustrate this, I'm going to ask you a question I want you to be honest with. How would we have reacted to some of those that we assumed we would have responded to in perfect obedience and in faith? But when we're honest with ourselves about this tendency towards tribalism, would we have? How about this? The harsh hermit. The harsh hermit. You know what I'm talking about here? When you look at places like Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 7, and this is talking about, of course, John the Baptist says that he came preaching in the wilderness, saying, Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is the voice crying in the wilderness. Verse 4, Now John himself was clothed in camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist and food with locusts and wild honey and Judea and, and was baptizing in Jordan for the permission of sins. Okay, let me be very clear. The whole argument that people need to come to church and dress their best, you would not have accepted John the Baptist. Because the guy wore worse than camos. He wore skins every day. And just like, you know, the, the, the mad scientist hair, that was John the Baptist. Mad scientist beard. And I mean, he would have had you over to his cave in the desert and he would have fed you as the main course, bugs, and as the dessert, honey. I mean, I might eat the dessert, right? But this guy didn't fit the mold, okay? He wouldn't have been invited to be the preacher in most churches. And not only was he a hermit, not only was he eccentric, and quite weird, he was, he was a little bit hard. 
I mean, his preaching was a little stern. And, I mean, it wasn't so much that he was just fire and brimstone. It was just, he just, he wasn't a southerner. I mean, let's be real honest here. I mean, we, we have a little trouble with the Yankees for, not just because they're Yankees, but because they're rude. I mean, right down here in the South, we don't say nothing directly to anybody. We just hem haul around it and use passive aggressive hints. Right? I mean, honestly. And then say, bless their heart. <laughs> and we don't like folks who just come out and just, they're rude. John the Baptist was rude. Because he'd tell you, you're a brood of vipers. And I suspect when he was preaching, he pointed to people he was talking about. Don't you think so? So, I mean, just imagine this guy. He's abrasive. He wears the weirdest things ever. He eats the weirdest things ever. I mean, would we have, let's be honest, would we have listened to him? I don't know. But Jesus says, of all those born of women up to that point, there have been none greater than John the Baptist. God said that. What would we have missed out on if we would have just judged him by what he wore or judged him by his, it was a tough one, but judged him by his hygiene? Or judged him by his diet, or judged him by whether or not he could say, bless your heart, or he was rude. You see, we complain when we have to travel long distances to hear the word, or when the air conditioner's not right. And he preached in the wilderness. We judge people by the clothes that they wear, and we judge their heart by the clothes that they wear. And I can say that all day because, you know, I'm a suit guy, so I like to wear my suits, but you ain't never heard me preaching to you have to. Because I'm gloriously unique. So are you. You can wear camo to church like Dr. Cole does. <laughs> Get upset when the preacher is too hard and points out our faults. Would we have believed the harsh hermit? What about the hillbilly hypocrite? You look over in Acts chapter 4, verse 13. And we see the assessment made by the Pharisees and the scribes. When they say, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men and they marveled. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. They perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men by their speech. Now, understand, they didn't look at their resume or their CV to know they were not educated. They could tell because they did not have educated speech. That means it wasn't refined. That means that the way that they spoke revealed that they were hillbillies, that they were hicks, you know? And these guys, they, they didn't speak like educated people because they, they wasn't educated. And educated people could tell it. And so they weren't learning. They hadn't been to school. They didn't have any degrees or their estimation of what that was at that time. And Peter, not only that, but if you judge people based upon whether or not they ever let you down, you would have never had anything to do with Peter. Because Peter was a roller coaster ride of emotions of up and down. I mean, if you were friends with him very long, you were going to be irritated at him. Everybody get that? I mean, Peter would say stuff to you and then he'd regret it all the time. So here we got this hillbilly hypocrite. Who makes mistakes all the time and has to say sorry and go back on it and do it again and sticks his foot in his mouth and makes absurd statements. I mean, sometimes we don't worry around people who are too loud 
or who talk too much, right? Or people who are maybe uneducated or uncouth or maybe come from the other side of the tracks. So let me ask you this. Would we have believed him? Or because of our tribalism, would we not even have heard the one who would preach the first gospel sermon, the one who Jesus would say, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, because of his confession, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Where would Christianity, where would the kingdom be without Peter? Without the hillbilly hypocrite. So we got this harsh, you know, hermit, and we got this hillbilly hypocrite. What about the notorious nerd? You look over in First Corinthians chapter two. First Corinthians chapter two, and we examine verses one through three. And it says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined to know nothing among you except Christus, Jesus Christ and him crucified. So Paul says, I did not come to you with excellence of speech. Okay, we look over in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. And it says here that for his letters, they say, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech is contemptible. Let me help you understand. Peter was a hillbilly hypocrite, but that man could preach. He'd get up and you'd hang on his words, right? If you gave him a chance. Paul would get up, and I don't know how else to understand this, but his preaching was not as good as Peter's. Do you get that? Everybody commented on it. His writing, well, that's something else. But his preaching was contemptible. You know what we might call that? Boring. Maybe he read his, can't you see Paul being the kind of guy who just read the manuscript or read the outline, right? Not the animated preacher. That was the hillbilly hypocrite. But the notorious nerd, that's exactly what he was. He was a guy who'd rather be reading a book than anything else in the world. I mean, that's who he was. He spent his whole life going to school. He'd rather write than he would speech. And people would rather read him than they would listen to him. And you think about who he is. I mean, the Apostle Paul, in addition, he was a self-appointed destroyer of all things Christian. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.13, he talks about I was formerly a blasphemer and all these things. So he's not only the nerd, he's got that nerd characteristic that when he gets his mind on something, he can't think about anything else, right? He is tunnel vision, totally focused. And he was that way about destroying Christianity. Now, he's going to change that tunnel vision and focus. But you ever dealt with somebody who just can't, everything they talk to you is always about the same thing? You know anybody like that? Totally tunnel vision. I mean, I like to talk about bass fishing, but I don't want to talk about that every single conversation, right? I like to talk about golf, especially with people who aren't as good as I am. But I, I like to talk about that, but not every single conversation. Well, Paul would have been the kind of person, I mean, he says things like that, right? I've determined to know nothing except Jesus Christ. And Jesus. That's who he was. He was intense. He was focused. He was not eloquent. And he would not have played pickleball with us. Because what does it say? Weak and contemptible. He was a notorious nerd. <laughs> he wouldn't have had, you know, cared which color was on his thing, right? Because I can promise you, Apostle Paul would have been the kind of guy who thinks you go to college for an education, right? Not for all that mess. Do you understand the point I'm trying to make now about all these guys and why we're studying biography? And the biggest point is this. There are a hundred people in here tonight. I don't know exactly that's the guess. 
Every one of you is different than everybody else. And every one of you is glorious sisters. That doesn't mean we've all reached our potential. But every one of you is deserving of every one of the rest of us. time. And when we default to that tribalism, and we start to size people up and categorize them, the end result of that is we would have missed out on everything. Because we would not have listened to the, you know, that crazy term. We would not, not have listened to the hillbilly hypocrite or the notorious nerd or maybe one other who, as was read for us in the beginning tonight, went home to his hometown where he grew up. And they said, is this Joseph's son? From the things he spoke, they rejected him. And they threw him out. Because the son of God didn't fit their mold. So you see, understanding the uniqueness of people, that God can use everybody, it's important. Well, tonight, I don't know what this would inspire as far as response, but if there's anybody here tonight that you need to make something right with somebody, maybe you haven't given somebody the time they deserve, or maybe you've kind of moved them aside in your way of thinking because of, well, the tribalism we all struggle with. Well, you might not want to come forward about that, but you know what you can do? You can sit with that person tonight as we're eating and laughing and <coughs> enjoying ourselves and being stronger together. And we can all work to just, you know, be kind to other people and be open to other people. And maybe listen to Jesus when he says, judge not lest you be judged and just kind of leave that tribalism at the, do at the door because if there's anywhere in the world where people should be accepted in life and their potential be, you know, built up and encouraged it should be here. Amen? Amen. You need to come from right now as we stand. And if you are hard, that's where Are you a soul that's seeking rest from the world you Do you know
that were um, if you took food to the millers, those dishes are in the, uh, the basement of the other building as well. So please pick those up. We have a few on our sick list. Um, we want to remember Charles Miller as he's um, still rehabbing after the fall. Please, be, uh, please remember Natalie Harris's family and passing her sister. Also remember um, Philip Taylor, he had back surgery this past week. The senior youth promotional that was scheduled for tonight has been canceled. Um, it will be rescheduled at a different time. The Happy Hearts Ladies will meet on Thursday morning, September 28th, 10 a.m. in Fellowship Hall. Our fall renewal, as Carrie mentioned, is October 7th through 11th with Kevin Haynes with Chris Swingford. Um, babysitting will be provided. There's a four-year, there's a four-year that will be able to a, a scheduled event so you can see times and all those things. There's also a financial seminar as well on October 14th from 9 to 12 in here. Babysitting is provided for that as well. And then also a new member luncheon is planned for the 15th of October. Um, it will be in here after the morning services. Please alert the page of Jennifer Allman if you want to attend that. Uh, let's see, I think that's about all the announcements I have. Um, we, we did receive a card from um, Tom Miller this morning. I read that. Uh, I'll put this in the office so if you want to see that, you can. Um, I think that's everything. If you have not had an opportunity to, to take the Lord's Supper today, it's been left in the high school classroom in the back. If you want to go back there and look. Sing my clothing songs, my video to assist you. Tom Miller told me today that Charles may go home this week, so that's good news. All the stands sing, I want to be a worker. I want to be a worker for the Lord. I want to love and trust His only word. I want to see you pray and be busy. In the vineyard of the Lord, I will work, I will pray, in the vineyard, in the vineyard of the Lord. I will work, I will pray, I will labor every day in the vineyard of the Lord. I want to be a worker strong and brave. I want to trust in Jesus' power to say, All who will truly come shall find a happy home in the kingdom of the Lord. I will work, I will pray, in the winter, in the winter of the Lord. I will work, I will pray. I will make a very day in the danger of the Lord. Would you bow with me, please? Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we're thankful for yet another Lord's Day and another opportunity to worship you, dear Lord. Pray that this worship has been done in spirit and in truth as you've commanded. The Lord, we know that we have many that are sick, that are struggling within this congregation, that Chris mentioned, as you please be with those, uh, be with our members and be with our brothers and sisters and, and restore them back to their health if it be thy will. The Lord, we pray that you be with our elders, and be with our deacons as they continue to work with this congregation. Also be with Brother Kerry as he continues to minister to us. The Lord, we ask you to bless this food to our bodies and, and may we use our bodies to your service to help grow your kingdom and become stronger Christians for this community. We ask these things in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> 